Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. My name is Doug and today I need to do a repair on an RC airplane and I need to mix some epoxy to do that. It's mixed by weight ratio and not by volume ratio to which some people might be familiar with. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do it with a scale down here in the shop and how this also applies to flying an airliner. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to see and I'll go ahead and show you how I mix it. Thanks for stopping by. All right, folks, we're over here at the whiteboard. Uh, and before we go ahead and take a look at the beam balance, I want to go ahead and just run through some uh, basic uh, understanding of how the beam balance works. And we're going to use the uh, common analogy of a seesaw to go ahead and uh, quickly run through this. Uh, we've got just one equation really to deal with here, and that's weight times arm equals the moment. And we're going to go ahead and explain right now how that uh, applies here. I've got the uh, beam, which is in blue, that's the uh, seesaw part of it. I've got the fulcrum in red, and that denotes the center of the beam for this demonstration. I've got two seats here. Each of those seats is distanced 10 feet from the center, which is the fulcrum. And if I go ahead and I put a 10 pound weight on both of these seats, all right, and we use our equation, weight 10 times, or 10 pounds I should say, times our arm 10 feet gives us 100 foot-pounds as a moment. Same thing on the other side. 10 times 10 equals 100. Now, the beam balance works like this. Suppose I take and I make that weight 20 pounds. All right. 20 pounds times a 10 foot arm gives us anybody? 200 foot pounds moment. All right. They are not equal, and the beam balance will tip, or the seesaw will tip down on the heavy side. Now, how do we go ahead and make that equal if I got 20 pounds on one side and 10 pounds on the other? What we can do is we can change the seat position all right, to five feet. So now, instead of 20 pounds times 10 feet, 20 times 5 foot gives us, anybody, 100 foot-pounds. Again, now making it equal, and the seesaw, or the beam balance, then balances out. So, we can either modulate the weight, or we can modulate the distance from the fulcrum to make them equal, or to take measurements, as we're going to see here in a second. Now, how does this apply to flying an airliner? Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, you got your basic airliner right here, and you can see under the main landing gear, I've got the fulcrum once again. Now, I get this question a lot as people are boarding the airplane. How come they board the front first? How come they don't go to the back first? It would seem to be easier. The reason for this is that you've got a fairly short beam in between the fulcrum, the main wheels, and a fairly large beam towards the back seats. Now you can see, with this airplane being empty, we've only got a certain amount of weight on this side and a certain amount of weight on this side. As we continue to load the airplane towards the back, what does that do? We start adding more and more weight to the back of the airplane, this weight hasn't changed. This weight times this moment starts to become greater than this, and the whole airplane goes over. And let's look at one more example. All right, we're back, and the jet is now flying. 
So what you see here is the center of lift over the wing. That's basically the fulcrum. And where we want to fly, weight-wise, is basically right here. You need to find out where the weight is. And what you do is you end up taking the arm and whatever weight you have here and the arm and whatever weight you have here weight times arm equals moment we find out the moment here find out what the moment is here add the two together that tells us where all the weight is concentrated in relationship to the center of lift and the airplane should be balanced if it's too far forward we've got issues if it's too far back we've got really big issues. So now that I've gone ahead and demonstrated that, let's head to the beam balance and see exactly what we're dealing with as far as mixing epoxy. All right, before we go ahead and leave the whiteboard, uh, let's talk about the epoxy that we're using. It's a uh, System 3 uh, general epoxy. Let's see if I can't zoom in on that. Uh, it's a 100 to 44 by weight ratio. As you can see here, 100 to 44, resins at 100, hardeners at 44. We've got our balance down here. If we divide 100 by 44, which is a ratio, we come up with 0.44. All right, why is that important? Because we're gonna take our arm for the hardener at nine and a half inches and multiply that by 0.44 and that's going to give us 4.18 inches. That is the distance for the arm for the resin. So the hardener will go on this side at nine and a half inches whatever the weight turns out to be doesn't make a difference. We put our cup at 4.18 inches and whenever that balances out we'll have the right amount of resin for whatever the amount of hard, uh, hardener that we've put in there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scale and how that applies. Alright, here's the beam balance. Uh, my father had made this uh, years ago when he was building his first airplane and it was made for a much larger cup for the resin. Uh, so that's what this is all about, but it's just a pedestal with a uh, steel shaft for a fulcrum and You've got a small pin coming out the side of it and a Just a hash mark there as a reference now how this whole thing works uh, Is pretty uh, simple. Uh, you just take your mixing cup. This uh, line is nine and a half inches from the fulcrum the second mixing cup for the resin is 4.18 inches from the fulcrum. That goes back to the math we just looked at. And you can still see the thing really isn't balanced. We take a large block of lead and a small block of lead, put it on the arm here, and just like the scales in the doctor's office, we're gonna move that large block of lead until we're pretty close to the line. We'll take the smaller block of lead and just bump that until it lines up on the line. Now if we pull back, everything is zeroed. The balance is equal weight on one side, equal weight on the other side. The cups are in place, everything balances out. So with the hardener, I'm just using water here, we take just an unspecified amount, whatever you think you're going to need, and you can see obviously the weight is shifted, and this is down on the pin. Now what we do on the other side is we start adding water. This is the worst camera work. And as we uh, add it, you can see it's starting to come up. It's difficult to do because of the surface tension of the water. But that is just about where we need to be. So now that the balance, uh, the beam balance is balanced, uh, if we take a look at the water in the cups, 
it's almost twice as much. And by volume, that's the ratio that we need. It's two to one, but by weight, it's 100 to 44. And you can see that that's just about what we've got there. So uh, it all works. So if you're interested in building one, or you need to mix some epoxy and they just give you a weight ratio, this is how you go ahead and do it. So thanks for joining me down in the shop. Appreciate you stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.